Building on top of our existing UI5 TypeScript application, we will develop a custom control today. We start in our main view, where we add a new XML namespace for custom controls, which points to our project root and a control directory. Our custom control will be a tile displaying an image of a product category and its name. We will just display a random category for now. Let's create a new control directory that contains the tile.ts file. This is where we'll define our new custom control. Our tile extends the core UI5 control, which our IDE automatically imports from the library once we hit enter. We define our custom control's metadata, namely its properties and events. The tile has an image and a text, both of type string, as the image will be base64 encoded. Events are defined by their name only, so this is all we need to make the tile clickable. We then modify the control's renderer and its render method that will inject the HTML into the page. The render manager opens a div, places the control inside, and then closes the div. After the base control has been rendered, we can use the getter methods that UI5 automatically generates for our defined properties. They are generated at runtime and don't yet exist at design time, which is why we get these type errors. To get rid of them, we can start the UI5 TypeScript interface generator in watch mode. It creates a new file for the interface definitions and provides code that we can simply copy and paste. Nice, the errors are gone. We can now define a new vertical box. It holds an image and has a bottom margin. It also holds another VBox with the text and an icon. We then bind the browser's click event to the press event that we defined in our metadata. We can now place the VBox at the rendered DOM node. Finally, we must not forget to import the UI5 controls that we used for our custom control. This might already be taken care of in case you used code completion, which is another benefit of using TypeScript. To get rid of this weird rendering bug, we have to manage the lifecycle of our custom control. We declare a new private property, which is where we store the outer VBox, and in the onBeforeRendering lifecycle method, we can then check its existence and make sure it gets destroyed in case it already exists. It's good practice to do the same thing in the exit lifecycle method. Let's continue with automatically duplicating our custom control for all categories in the next episode.